Thank you. Today, this will be useful to some of the wonderful students at the uh, at the Asset College. College. <laughs> okay. What you can see is the gas bottles going here. This is for the oxygen used by the welders offshore. It's tightened. Yeah. <laughs> DNV 2.7-1 certified containers for offshore comes up like that. So you have a little look in there. Um, yeah, my name's Andrew Hart from uh, Cargo Store Worldwide Trading. So Cargo Store um, manufacture and uh, lease at DNV 2.7-1 certified containers for offshore use. So what that really means is these containers, while some of them do look like normal shipping containers, they're actually a much higher grade. Um, and there's very strict processes and inspection procedures around both the manufacturer and then the actual management and use of the containers. The containers are then taken to a range of clients um, around the world um, and they lease them. And they lease them for what's called the final mile logistics and that's the last leg where you go from um, the port, the oil and gas port, out to an offshore platform um, and back again. So they'll lease them for the duration of that project. Um, and yeah, there's a few key differences. So one of them is all of our units have what's called a pad eye. So that is, you probably can't see it, but there's a small hole here and we use slings uh, in order to lift them. And the reason for that is an oil rig or a wind turbine is stationary like this and the boat coming up to it is on the water turning like that. So you have to use the sling and what's called a banksman to lift it carefully and put the cargo onto the deck. Many of the containers are much smaller than standard containers. So for example, we have 10 foot containers. That's because out, out at sea on a platform, there is much more limited space. So they need to take small amounts very often. A lot of our containers, and we have the largest fleet of what's called reefer containers. So those are refrigerated again, built to DMV standard. And these are used by the catering companies to carry the food and store the food on board. Um, and then also by the construction companies to carry chemicals that are kept at a stable uh, temperature throughout the process. Um, then after that, there's a range of much smaller units, things like this toolbox, which I'm standing next to. We have gas bottle racks. Pretty much, if you can imagine it, um, they, we can build it uh, and lease it to you. So. DMV 2.71, what does that mean? Well, when you look at a standard 20 foot shipping container, you'll probably see that the tar weight is usually, I think about 1.8 uh, tons. Ours, same unit will be 3.6 tons. And that's because the grade of the steel used is so much more um, um, condensed and so much more durable because the treatment of these units out there offshore, it's a very harsh environment, particularly in the hotter countries where you've got high humidity of salt water. So the steel is very, very heavy duty and it's manufactured in this only, even the mills where it's manufactured have to be certified. You want to walk around? Can I walk around and show you? Great. Well, in that case, um, I can show you over there, my team, but uh, uh, you can see some of the, the, that's a 20 foot close that we're talking about uh, and a 10 foot that we've just been talking about. And then we'll just go around over here. And this is uh, a gas bottle rack. And what you can see is the gas bottles going here. This is for the oxygen used by the welders offshore. It's tightened up. And then the whole lot is lifted using no slings and taken offshore and back. And while we're here, you can now see the pad eye. So this is what I was talking about needing a pad eye. So the shackle pin comes through here, which the sling goes on. This unit, as you can see, can be loaded from the side like that. So in the depot, you can use a forklift, then you close it. And then when you're offshore, this lid, which weighs 300 kilos, comes up like that. So you have a little look in there. And the reason for this is because offshore, the crane is always going to be coming down from above. There is no forklifts on, a, uh, on, a, on an offshore oil platform. So there's, yeah, where were we? So there's the grade of the steel, then there's the pad eyes. And then actually the way these are manufactured, the actual integrity of the design is very, very stringent. And they're designed in such a way that they can never fail. So when a container, one of our containers is born, we call it, when it's born, when it comes from the factory, it has birth certificates. Those birth certificates can be up to 400 pages long, including the CV and the qualifications of every single welder that's been involved in it, including the milling of the steel, like every aspect of that container. We will then inspect it every three or six months, depending on which country we're operating in. 
and it's constantly certified, recertified, certified, recertified so that our clients know that it can't just suddenly fall off a crane out at sea or anything like that. So that is uh, pretty much, um, I think, probably the best I can do in a potted uh knowledge of of what is the dmv 2.71 containers um and what i would say is just go to our website uh which is www.cargostore.com um i think you can see it probably somewhere on a unit and you'll find pictures of all the different brochures uh and uh i hope you know one day this will be useful to some of the wonderful students at the uh at the asset college, college. <laughs> okay is that good thank, thank you thank you